welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're taking a detailed look at how AMD's SAM or Smart Access Memory Technology influences performance in a wide range of games. 36 to be exact and all have been tested at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. Now technically speaking this isn't an AMD technology, well not a technology developed by AMD, rather they have branded support for resizable base address register or resizable bar, a feature introduced with the PCIe 3.0 spec. For those of you not yet up to speed, SAM or resize or bar defines how much of your graphics card's VRAM can be mapped for access by the CPU. Typically, the CPU can only access up to 256 megabytes of mapped VRAM, but with the resizable bar feature, the CPU can have full access to the graphics card's VRAM buffer. There's really no reason why the 256 megabyte limit exists. It was put in place back in the 32-bit era and hasn't been altered since. That said, for the most part, there's been no real reason to make any changes. High-end GPUs typically feature wide memory buses and therefore have significantly more memory bandwidth at their disposal when compared to system memory. That said, AMD did take a different approach with their RDNA2 architecture by using a 256-bit wide memory bus in conjunction with their Infinity Cache. And they obviously felt it was time to take advantage of PCIe's resizable bar feature to help make up the difference when compared to Ampere. However, it is well worth noting that AMD is only offering support for this feature with the new RDNA 2 GPUs when paired with a Ryzen 5000 series processor on a 500 series motherboard. So that did make it a lot less appealing to us, though we also recognised at the time that this was a feature that could be offered on all current AMD and Intel platforms. Also, NVIDIA came out and said they will be enabling SAM with a new driver update soon, while also stating they've got it working on both AMD and Intel platforms in their labs, and presumably at the time they were using a Ryzen 3000 series processor. However, to date, NVIDIA is yet to release driver support for resizable bar, and we've heard no new information as to when that's expected to arrive for GeForce owners. AMD is also yet to officially offer SAM support for 300 and 400 series chipsets as well as Ryzen 3000 and older processors, but with the help of some motherboard makers, some of the older motherboards now support this feature, and I've heard reports of it even working with Radeon RX 5700 series GPUs on B450 motherboards, so that's very cool and it might be something that we look at in the near future. There's also been reports of resizable bar working on select Z490 motherboards that have since received updated bar support. So in the near future, we do expect this to be a widely supported feature. Now, after my GeForce RTX 3070 versus Radeon RX 6800 comparison, I noticed a small number of people complaining that I didn't test with SAM enabled and therefore claimed the comparison was unfair, misleading, used poor testing methodology, and so on. You know, all the usual stuff we hear from the uninformed vocal minority who have zero understanding of just how time consuming and involved this testing really is. Anyway, all of that nonsense aside, there are good reasons for why we don't test with SAM enabled by default, reasons which I'm sure are obvious to many of you. Of course, as just mentioned, it's only officially supported by a single processor series right now with just two different chipset options. The other reason being that with the right processor and motherboard combination, resizable bar isn't even enabled by default. Typically, we do like to provide out of the box type performance with the only exception being XMP. That's quite literally the only thing that we enable for both AMD and Intel test systems. Everything else is left stock, which is why we test Intel processors without enforcing the TDP limits, as that's not the out of the box experience for over 95% of all Z490 motherboards. And it was the same with Z390, Z370, and so on. Anyway, let's not go down that rabbit hole. I don't have time for another video right now, and frankly, uh, we're well and truly over that discussion. So in a nutshell, right now, official support for resizable bar is limited, and it's not enabled by default on any motherboard. And in a moment, you'll see why that's likely the case. Of course, the ideal solution would be to just test with both configurations. So one with SAM enabled and one without. And that's exactly what I would have done if I'd only tested, let's say, a dozen games or so, but not 41 games. At three resolutions, that's almost 400 benchmark runs for testing a single GPU, and of course we did too. Adding another 400 runs for a SAM-enabled configuration wasn't really on the cards. Sorry, not even I am that crazy for a single video. Actually, that's not true. I have done significantly more benchmark runs for a single video. I guess the point I'm trying to make is it wasn't really the focus of this video. There's a lot of extra things you can test, but that video wasn't really about that. And now we have a separate video 
looking at exactly that. So I've gone back and I've tested all over again with Sam enabled for a separate content piece focused on that specific feature. That means we've got the RX 6800 with resizable bar, though this time we have 36 games as I had to throw a few of the results out for games such as Fortnite that have since been updated and validating those older previous test results. Anyway, 36 games is still a lot, so I didn't see the need to spend a whole heap of time retesting those games from start to finish with all three configurations. I thought we would just do 36 games. And for testing, I'm once again using the Ryzen 9 5950X test system, armed with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200CL14 memory in a dual channel, dual rank configuration. Representing the GeForce GPU is the RTX 3070 Founders Edition graphics card, while the Radeon GPU will be represented by AMD's reference card, and both are stock, so there's no overclocking here. Also, please note, I'm not going to go over all 36 graphs here, we probably don't have time for that, so we'll individually take a look at around half a dozen of the games tested, and then I'll jump into some breakdown graphs that quickly summarise all the data. Please note, all graphs will be made available to Floatplane and Patreon members. Okay, let's get into it. And we'll start with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, as this is currently one of the best showings for Sam that we've come across. Incredibly, we're looking at a 20% performance uplift at 1080p, taking the RX 6800 from 103 FPS on average to 124 FPS. The RX 6800 was already much faster than the RTX 3070 in this title, and now we're looking at a 57% performance advantage. Then at 1440p, we're looking at a 19% performance improvement with Sam enabled and a 17% increase at 4K. And the 4K gains are quite extreme really as it takes the experience from somewhat unplayable by my rather high standards to playable. And should you dial back the quality preset one notch, the game will be very smooth. Moving on to Hitman 2, here we have some very strange numbers. At 1080p, we're looking at a decent 7% performance uplift, which is great really as it is free performance. Still it's strange though because at 1440p we received a much bigger 18% performance boost and typically when we see this you'd assume some kind of system bottleneck at 1080p like a CPU limitation for example. That being the case you'd also expect to see similar gains at 4k as to what was seen at 1440p. However here the margin does drop back down to 10% which is of course still a very impressive gain, but it makes the 1440p data appear quite odd. I went back and retested only to get the same numbers, so again, is strange, but there are a few oddities with Sam enabled. Here we're seeing that performance in Borderlands 3 wasn't really that odd at all, it was just downright impressive. We're looking at a huge 16% performance boost at 1080p. Again, that's free performance, which is obviously great to see. We're also looking at a 14% performance boost at 1440p. Again, very impressive stuff, and it means the RX 6800 is now 44% faster than the RTX 3070. Interestingly, the smallest gains are seen at 4K, but even so, here we're still looking at an 11% improvement, and double digit gains are nothing to sneeze at. So overall, Sam is of great benefit in Borderlands 3. Another title where Sam is of great benefit is Godfall. Here we're again seeing a really strong performance boost at 1080p as the RX 6800 becomes 17% faster, again offering almost 50% more performance than the RTX 3070. Though as we've seen a few times now, the performance improvement is reduced as the resolution increases, dropping to 13% at 1440p, which again is still very impressive, as it is free performance after all. Then at 4K we're seeing an 8% performance boost. It's only a few extra frames, but We'll take them. Dirt 5 is another game that benefits quite a bit from enabling SAM. Here we're looking at an 11% boost at 1080p and 1440p with a 10% boost at 4K. So a very consistent performance improvement across the three tested resolutions. Okay, so let's take a look at a few games that didn't benefit all that much from the inclusion of SAM support. One such game being F1 2020 where we only saw a 4% boost at 1080p, 2% at 1440p, and then nothing at 4K. That's certainly not a bad result, any extra performance is welcomed, and while you're never going to notice a 4% boost at over 200fps, it's better than nothing. We're looking at up to a 3% performance boost in Death Stranding at 4K, taking us from 93fps to 96fps. Again, that is free performance, but it's also hardly worth getting excited over. Star Wars Squadrons also saw little to no performance improvement with Sam enabled, but hey, at least it didn't hurt performance, and as you're about to see, that wasn't always the case. 
Unfortunately, in Battlefield 5, we did see a small performance regression at 1080p, though we are talking about just a 2% reduction. The 1440p results are within the margin of error, so no real change there. And then we do see a 6% boost at 4K, which again is nice, so rather mixed results in this title. Performance with Sam in control was very similar to what we saw in Battlefield 5. We're looking at no performance improvement here, with a very slight regression at 1080p. Another game that saw no performance improvement was The Outer Worlds. The results are roughly within the margin of error at 1080p, though there is a clear performance regression at 4K, albeit just 2 FPS. The Red Dead Redemption 2 results are also mixed. We see a rather nice 8% improvement in 1% low performance at 1080p, but beyond that, performance is slightly lower at 1440p and 4K. And then we see the performance in Apex Legends isn't great with Sam Enabled. We're looking at a 10% drop at 1080p, 7% at 1440p, and then similar performance at 4K. So overall, not a great result for Sam. And then we have Serious Sam 4, which also didn't like Sam, dropping 9% at 1080p, 7% at 1440p, though performance at 4K was much the same. Okay, so the effectiveness of SAM, or more accurately, resize or bar, is very much game dependent. In some instances, we even saw performance go backwards. So far, we've looked at about a dozen of the games tested, so let's move on to quickly compare the performance in all 36 games. Starting with the 1080p data, we see that on average across the 36 games tested, enabling SAM was good for just a 3% increase. Of course, we did see gains as high as 20% in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 17% in Godfall, and 16% in Borderlands 3, but we also saw little to no improvement in nearly half of the games tested. I'm talking about margins of 2% or less. Meanwhile, margins of 4% or less were seen in well over half the games tested, 22 to be exact, and typically, I deem margins of 5% or less to be a tie when comparing either CPUs or GPUs, for example. And this is because if you're at 60 FPS, a 4% boost is like an extra 2 to 3 FPS. So for the majority of games, SAM does offer little to nothing. There were even a few instances where performance dropped quite a bit, seen in Serious SAM 4 and Apex Legends. And we see that when moving to 1440p, we're really looking at more of the same. This time we see 21 games with a difference of 4% or less in either direction. So we're getting well over half of the titles tested. Sam made very little difference to the frame rate, resulting in a 3% increase on average across the 36 games tested. Then finally at 4K, we're again looking at an average performance uplift of 3% across the 36 games. Again, 21 of the games saw a change of 4% or less, with just 8 games showing an improvement of 8% or better. So there you have it. Depending on the game, enabling SAM can be of great benefit, though in some instances it can also be detrimental to performance, though that was rare. Now, because this isn't a feature that you can simply toggle on or off between games, as it does require a full system reset, you're either going to game with SAM enabled or disabled. That being the case, it is worth checking to see if it offers anything in the games you play, or if it actually hurts performance. I think most of you will want to enable SAM, at least those of you who can, but at the same time, if you play a wide range of games, you likely don't stand to gain a great deal overall, but where you do, it is free performance. As for my RTX 3070 versus RX 6800 benchmark comparison, had I enabled SAM, it wouldn't really have changed anything. The RX 6800 would have been about 14% faster than the RTX 3070 at 1440p, so not 11% faster, and I seriously doubt that changes anything for you. It certainly doesn't change my conclusion in any way. On a side note, it's likely going to be a similar story with DLSS. If I enable that technology and the select games that support it, the RTX 3070 might have been 3 to 5% faster overall, but that's a lot messier as it's no longer an apples to apples comparison in terms of image quality. So regardless of whether or not you think DLSS looks better, it's no longer a like for like comparison. But ultimately, when testing with such an insane volume of games, it really doesn't influence the overall results anyway. So like I said in that content piece, if the game or games you know you'll be mostly playing do support DLSS, the RTX 3070 is likely going to be the best option for you. And the same really does apply to ray tracing, in fact, even more so. If that's a priority for you, then absolutely get the RTX 3070. Anyway, all of that information was covered in the comparison. I think for now I will continue to test Radeon GPUs without SAM enabled, especially for massive benchmarks featuring over two dozen titles. But of course I will reevaluate once support for resizable bar is more widespread and possibly even enabled by default. 
That said, let me know what you think about testing Radeon GPUs on my Zen 3 test system with SAM disabled. Uh, do you think that's the right call or should it be enabled? As always, I really do enjoy hearing back from you guys and you do help shape our content. So make sure you do let us know below. Might even create a poll or something like that once you guys have all had a chance to watch this video. Anyway, that is going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Uh, if you'd like to become more involved with the Harbour Unboxed channel and get some pretty cool perks along the way, then you can access uh, the Harbour Unboxed community, a, a private community on Floatplane or Patreon. So either of those services will give you access to stuff like our exclusive Discord chat, monthly live streams, Q and A's, behind the scenes videos, all that cool stuff. So yeah, if you're interested, links in the video description. If not, perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.